Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at Laka running on a Pandora's box. This is actually known as the Pandora's Key 7. It's a very popular Pandora's box that's all over the internet, and you can pick them up for pretty cheap. Now, I do plan on making a tutorial on how to do this. It's actually pretty simple, but setting up the internal joysticks is a bit of a pain. And Laka will be running from an SD card on the board that comes in this box itself. Now, this is a very similar board. It's powered by the 8-core Amlogic S912. We have 1 gigabyte of RAM, HDMI out, VGA, two USB ports, and the GPIO connection for the sticks and buttons. So, obviously, right now, I have it running the Pandora's Key 7 operating system from the SD card. And everything is fully functional. I still have have all the games that came preloaded on here but if I want to run Laka here all I have to do is swap out my SD card and I've already flashed this SD card with Laka I'm gonna place it in the board and power it on we should see the Pandora 7 logo pop up but then it'll start booting from the SD instead of the internal storage and like I said I have Laka installed on that SD card if you're not familiar with Laka Basically, it's a RetroArch operating system. And this specific version of Laka that I'm running here is actually made for S912 Android boxes, but since we pretty much have the same thing inside of the Pandora's Key 7, it works with this unit. I've just preloaded a few things that I want to test here, like some Neo Geo, FBA, PSP, and Dreamcast. I also have a couple main games here. And as you can see, I do have the internal joysticks and buttons working here. We have first player and second player. Both of them are functional, and this is the most annoying part about getting this all set up. And unfortunately, Laka won't recognize them right off the bat. There is a few things we need to do here, and I will be doing a full tutorial if there's enough interest. Just let me know in the comments below. So on the back of this unit, there's two USB ports. And what we have to do is connect those two USB ports together in order for Laka to recognize this as a USB controller instead of GPIO. So it does take a little bit of setting up. And in this video, I just kind of want to show off the performance here to see if anybody's really interested in a full tutorial. So with the included Pandora 7 operating system, a lot of the higher end stuff or 3D games really lags out on this S912. And I'm not sure if it's going to be any better running Laka here. But we're about to test it out. First up, let's get into some lower end stuff. We'll start out with Neo Geo and we'll go with Metal Slug X. And by the way, with Laka and RetroArch, you can add box art if you want to. I'm just kind of loading this from the internal storage and I didn't do a lot of setting up yet. And when you have the system set up correctly, you can press start and select, it'll bring you back into the menu, you can exit the game, and then move on to something else. Here we have the main version of Altered Beast. I really wanted to test out some arcade stuff, because that's basically what we have here, two arcade sticks. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense to play Super Nintendo with this. But it will run, and it runs quite well, along with Genesis, PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, a lot of the lower end systems will perform just fine on this hardware. Moving over to the Final Burn Alpha Core. Actually, this is Final Burn Neo, but either way, that's the only logo I could find. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3, and I did want to demonstrate that both of these controllers are working independently of each other. We have second player over here, all the buttons and sticks work fine, and we have first player on the left-hand side. Let's move over to a higher-end system. We'll do PSP using the PPSSPP Core. So first up, we have Continuum Shift at 2x resolution. A lot of the 2D games for PSP are going to run fine on this hardware, but when we move up to the 3D stuff, like Tekken Dark Resurrection or Tekken 6, we're going to run into some issues. And unfortunately, with this build, I ran into some graphical issues with the Tekken series. I'll show that off next, but there are some really good 2D fighters for PSP that'll run at full speed. Here's Tekken Dark Resurrection for PSP, and like I mentioned, I was running into some major issues here. 
I've actually never seen this before. I tried messing around with the settings, but I couldn't get it to go away. I also tried another ROM. Kind of scratched PSP off the list for now and moved over to Dreamcast. Here we have the Flycast Core running Capcom versus SNK2. We're not quite at full speed and I don't have any frame skip on. We're at 54 FPS here. It's not bad, but it's definitely not perfect. little more Dreamcast with Dead or Alive 2 and I do have frame skip enabled. As you can see it's a bit choppy here and I will turn it off in just a second. So I now have frame skip off and the S912 is having a heck of a time running these 3D Dreamcast games at full speed. I also tested out Crazy Taxi and I couldn't get over 45 FPS. And the last one for Dreamcast here, we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We're averaging around 42 to 43 FPS. You'll see it dip down in a second. So in my opinion, this isn't playable, even with frame skip on. I know I'll have a lot of people asking about it, and yes, this will handle PlayStation 1 just fine. I even tested out Bloody Roar 2, which is one of the harder games to emulate, but here we have Tekken 3 running really well here with the PC SX Rearm Core. So in the end, I personally don't think it's worth running Laka on here. Now I know there's some people out there that are going to disagree with me and probably want a tutorial. So if you do want to do this, I can do a tutorial. Just let me know in the comments below. But basically what we have here is a low-end AmLogic chip that struggles with 3D games, even running Android, which is one of the best operating systems that you can run on this chip. I think the best use case scenario for running Laka on a system like this would be the use of shaders or filters. A lot of the times with these Pandora's Key 7 operating systems, smooth filtering is on from the factory and I personally hate it. There's just no way to turn it off. But Laka is very customizable, so you could add filters, borders, scan lines, and you can even add bezels if it really comes down to it. So if you're looking to do something like that, just let me know in the comments below. I kind of want to get a feel for how many people are really interested in this, and I can make a tutorial in the next couple days. But just keep in mind, it's really not going to increase performance in the 3D base games because this is a low-end chip. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.